So today I would like to thank every one of you here for supporting this channel as we are close to hitting 500 subscribers. It's been just a little over two months but I'd say that this period of my life has been the most transformative for me. Now the purpose of this video is to further educate and inspire you to really take actions on the things that are truly aligned to your soul. Whether it's starting out a YouTube channel, starting your own business or pursuing the exact career that you want to pursue. I'm going to be giving you every single thing that I learned during during this last two months so that your journey could be more smooth and fulfilling every step of the way. If you guys resonate with this video, feel free to subscribe, leave a comment and let me know what you want to see and I would love to make a video that is tailored towards your request. Let's get started. The very first time I posted on YouTube was actually in 2010 and I did a Thai cover of the song 21 I Don't Care and that actually went semi-viral at that time and the experience was actually very rewarding but after that I fell in love with the process of wearing makeup so I started posting makeup tutorials in 2015 but I was on and off with YouTube all throughout 2015, 2016, 2018, 2020 and onwards until right now where I've decided that I really want to succeed in this space from 2024 onwards and I could say that this last two months has really accelerated my growth so for those of you who have the drive inside of you you have the passion to get started but there are obstacles that get in your way of really persisting here is what you're going to do to really ace 2024 and make your dream vision your reality one character you want to step into the energy of somebody who wakes up with a purpose who knows what they're going to do as soon as they get up and knows what tasks they're going to accomplish each day of the week regardless if you have a YouTube channel or not and especially if you are filming yourself on camera the most important step is to get it right when you are off camera see the advice that didn't really work for me was just get started as soon as you can register your YouTube account film your video and improve along the way and the reason why it fell short every time is because I didn't have the characteristics of somebody who could really succeed in YouTube or in other creative professions of her life the characteristics of somebody who would listen to their friends and family or distant acquaintances telling them the stats of the failure rates of people starting their own business or YouTube was more dominant than the girl who believed that she could manifest anything that she wanted and even though I had 700 Facebook friends and quite a lot of Instagram following I couldn't even manage to grow my YouTube account past 15 subscribers within two months and actually the other attempt that I forgot to share with you was even just last year where I tried setting up an account dedicated towards makeup shorts and it took me about two months to get six organic subscribers whereas today it took me just a little over two months of posting to get up to about 426 subscribers and you'd ask me is it because of the video quality the thumbnails or the titles or the hook and I would say it's actually about the character that I was building off camera now one of the quotes that really stuck with me was one by Alex Homozi and he says in order for people to listen to you you must first do then number two talk about the shit that you did and I realized that if we ourselves haven't really achieved something significant in our life then we have this imposter syndrome in talking about it on camera because let's face it reading personal development books versus actually living the experience and going through the failures and success in that journey gives you a completely different perspective so even though throughout the years I've done a bunch of things but I never felt like I had true authority in what I had to say until I decided to commit to my beach clips now to be honest even though my beach clips didn't really take off or go viral but the process of building that inner identity that said centered around being somebody who would actually go through the process of traveling six hours a day to just get 30 seconds worth of footages, change the way I saw myself and how I approach my work. Honestly, after you've repeated so many times of going out into the blazing hot sun, getting a camera to film yourself to get all the perfect footages and then editing a hundred of them before you launch the channel, it built so much confidence within me that no matter if I don't get subscribers right away, those mini obstacles can't throw me off because I've experienced something much harder harder before I even posted one video on this channel. 2. Mindset It's very important that before you even register your YouTube account, you must understand the importance of cultivating a growth mindset. See the thing with your mind is that it will always find ways to sabotage your growth. You will find all the evidences of why the world is unfair or why your results are not initially paying off. But how you respond to these negative thoughts will literally determine
determine whether you will have the capacity to create the content that will blow up your channel and change the trajectory of your career. Now I have to confess to you, there were countless times these last two months where I thought to myself, the world is so unfair. I put in my blood, sweat and tears to make these beach clips. Then I spent so many hours editing my long form videos. I have so much value to add to my audience, yet the YouTube algorithm just won't work in my favor. And although that thought is absolutely valid, but what it does to me each day is makes me feel heavy. I feel bitter thinking these thoughts. And when I'm bitter, it's actually so much more harder to film a content with good energy, which then helps my audience resonate with my message. So once I saw that majority of my subscribers came from my long form videos and my YouTube is consistently growing from my long form videos, I then turned back and asked myself if I had all the money in the world to invest in improving my work and I was no longer traumatized by my past, how will I make my content in the next video? Meaning that will I change my backdrop? Will I change the way I present the message? Will I manage my emotion every single day so that my energy is positive and you're receiving that positive energy? See, all these questions came into my mind when I replaced the thought of the world is so unfair, the algorithm doesn't work for me with if these issues don't exist, how do I truly show up? And then I took action. And the more I was doing these things, the more traction I was also getting, which in turn features positive feedback loop that actually when you ask yourself the right questions, the universe truly delivers. Now, one of my favorite books was by Gabby Bernstein, The Universe Has Your Back. And I really saw that as long as you cooperate with the universe by asking yourself the right questions, then the universe will really bring in the right audience and actually boost the algorithm to help your videos get views. And the other thing I was willing to do was that when I saw that my beach clip was just not working, it was a flop. But then I reinterpret the situation that actually I can use everything that I learned during that period to my advantage now in my long form videos. And so I was willing to adapt my content to what the market needs. If the audience wants me to talk longer, then I will talk longer. If the audience doesn't want to see my beach clip, then I will allocate my time to do more long form videos than stick with something that people don't want to see. And the thing is, I'm not going to take this personally. If people are not viewing certain types of content, it doesn't mean I'm not good enough. The only reason why I feel rejected is because of the meaning I assign to what I see. But now I'm choosing to assign a completely different meaning to every single obstacle that I see, whether it's not getting views, not getting comments. And I always tell myself that the universe will unfold fold everything for me if I just relax. So that growth mindset means that you have to be willing to adapt to what is working and never victimize yourself when you don't see what you want to see. Instead, ask yourself, how can I adapt even more to make things work in my favor and keep that positive loop going? Three, persistence. Now, unless you are already an established influencer or you have some friends that have influence in the industry, it's going to be a very, very hard time when you start from scratch, when you're putting in all the blood, sweat and tears that you can into your work and it's getting like 30 views a day. And I have a family friend who already worked in the Thai entertainment industry since she was 15. So then throughout her twenties, she already had industry connection with actual big celebrities in Thailand. And no matter what she launched, there will always be a level of success, whether it's a clothing brand, whether it's sponsoring other products. There's this unfair advantage that made me feel bitter, not towards her, but just towards life in general, that she could be literally filming an ordinary 15 second shot of her wearing a nice lipstick and it would get 20,000 views on Instagram. Whereas I would spend days and hours and hours editing my seven minutes long makeup video and it would get like, again, 30 views in the first day. And this kind of result was really discouraging for me when I was younger. Now, the thing with posting content is that the more engagement you have at the beginning, whether it's the first day or first two, three days, the easier it is for that content to take off. But sometimes you'll get lucky and the content will spike up a month or two after you've posted it. And how you manage your emotion when you don't see the result result in that one month phase is so important. If you look at your past 10 videos and say, you know what, this is not working. I'm going to go back to work a job that unfulfills me because YouTube just doesn't work. And that's the reality that you will manifest. You gave up on yourself too early and too soon just because you saw a result that you assigned excessive meaning to. So when you start to really, really persist and cut out every single negative noises, this is what truly happens. Instead of you even bothering to engage in a conversation where your friends or acquaintance would say the average YouTuber never gets 1000 subscribers in the first 12 months or the average businesses fail within the first year and 99% of people fail when they start. You're not going to give a fudge about those statements because you are focused on elevating yourself every day and you see evidence of this through your persistence, your consistency to keep taking action when things don't work in your favor. And the other thing that I used to make a mistake of is, well, she's an outlier. Only one in 10 people achieve that kind of growth in their YouTube channel. Well, she's privileged.
established, well, she already has this. And yes, of course, it's true. Some people are just born into established wealth or they're born into an environment with better opportunities. But so what? You have to stop acknowledging the skeptical truth or the pessimistic truth of you have to be realistic and see how the world works, that your chance of succeeding is almost zero. Because the more pessimistic or realistic you are, the more you will stay stuck in that reality. Whereas if you just embrace being delusional, but still taking realistic actions to approach realistic goals, then you have the power to prove all these people wrong that actually I can be the outlier. I can be that channel that gets exponential growth. And it's not because of anything but your self-belief, your conviction and your commitment to stay persistent in what you truly want to create for yourself. Four, emotional regulation. And the reason why I really emphasize emotional regulation is because it will impact on how you show up in every area of your life. If you are not emotionally stable and you let your past trauma hinder you from your growth, then you won't be able to create that killer content that takes your channel to the next level because even if you go viral once by luck and you're not able to reproduce that same result it's actually gonna make you feel really bad about yourself because I've kind of experienced this before now I want to tell you a story about my love life is that I met somebody that I had this instant emotional connection with I was already attracted to him from first sight and I used to think to myself oh if only I can just see him for two hours every fortnight at this meeting and I could just sit across him from the table and just admire him then I'll be so happy and what happened is that on the first night that we actually met, he ended up giving me a lift back to where I was staying and I felt really safe. I felt like I was catching the bus and train so much at the time. So to be driven by the guy that I like on the first time we met was so sweet. And when we met again the next fortnight, he suggested that we go and have dinner after the meeting. And so we did. And I just felt like, oh, we are so compatible when we really get along. And I fell asleep feeling so peaceful, so calm and so safe next to him. I felt this is it. This is my happiness. And so for the next one to two years, I just kept holding on to that beautiful memory that we created together. And even though almost two years later, we still share those beautiful moments together. And I'm always so happy to just see him and spend time with him. I realized that my priorities have changed. And it's not that I don't love him today, but it's just that I love my YouTube vision more. So what I'm trying to say is that there were many times where I compromised the times I could have been working on my mindset, my emotional regulation, and my content creating skills. And the hardest decision that I've ever made was not exactly letting go of the entire community that we are both a part of, but it was actually letting go of what he would think of me once I walk away. And that was the hardest part of persisting because at some point when you know that you are on the verge of exponential growth, you need to be able to regulate your emotions every single day in order for you to be able to hold the container of success that you're about to manifest. And I was really, really aware of this. So the point I'm trying to make with emotional regulation is that you need to create a life routine or an inner environment where you are not going to be easily triggered by anything. And that triggering can come from things like distracting text messages, distracting social obligations, distracting demands from people. Because all these sorts of distraction will hinder you from having your creative flow. It will hinder you from writing a good script. It will hinder you from believing that you can step into the identity of that exponential growth. And trust me, you don't want to sacrifice your future self for the current self right now that you're not fully satisfied with. And so that starts from you regulating your emotions and make sure that you create the environment for you to feel safe every single day by actually walking away from everything that doesn't serve you. Five, unfair advantage. Now the one thing I realized is that while money can buy us literally almost anything, but money didn't buy my discipline. Okay, yes, I have great genetics with my youthful face, but that doesn't mean I didn't put in the work to maintain how I look. See, I used to have friends that would say to me things like, the only reason why he gave you time and he gave you attention is because you're pretty. So it doesn't matter if you're not smart. As long as you're pretty, then you'll have success easier than somebody who works harder than you and is smarter than you. And I used to feel really disempowered and guilty with that kind of statement because I knew that I was working out consistently. I was learning about all these personal development advices and implementing them into my life so that I can always level up how I look and how I show up. But these people just kept making it like everything is so easy for us only because because we're pretty. And for that reason, I also don't care anymore if somebody wants to say I earn success by being pretty. Okay, that's great. It's true, I am pretty and I'm really happy with that. So I realized that, you know what? I can use everything that these people criticize me for as my unfair 
unfair advantage. The next unfair advantage that I have also is that I never got to live life as a teenager. So my teenage life was pretty much oriented around me staying in my bedroom, going to this suburb called Cabramatta and just kind of commuting back and forth 20 minutes and seeing the world as just being very small. So when I was 18, I started traveling one hour to CBD all by myself just to go for a walk in a QBB, in art galleries, in Darling Harbour and even go to the University of Sydney campus because that was where I wanted to study. And at that time, nobody in their teen years really goes and walk around QBB, art galleries, talk to the artists, go to the campus to study university materials when they were still in high school and finishing their HSC. So by the time I approached my later 20s, I don't really have a problem walking away from people that don't align to my future because I always knew what it felt like to be a loner and there's nothing wrong with being a loner. This unfair advantage gave me so much more drive, so much more motivation to work harder on my goals because I don't have sources of distraction. All those times I could have went out to drink alcohol, all those times I could have went out to hang out with the wrong people was spent on doing my affirmations. So the next time you guys feel victimized by the fact that you are just not born in this certain country, that you just didn't have the money or the resources to get started, that you just didn't have the right network to help give you leverage, I want you to discard all that thought and come back and ask yourself, how is this contributing to my unfair advantage? Six, gratitude. Gratitude is so important throughout every single part of your journey because the biggest mistake that I made before I even launched this channel was that I was so focused on how many numbers of subscribers can I get? What can I get from people so that I feel validated? But it wasn't until I started posting long form videos and seeing very constructive comments. And it was something that truly reminded me of the time I was doing interview coaching. The feedback was not just about, oh, your dress looks so pretty and your face is so pretty, but it's actually about your information is useful. Your information helped me. Those kind of comments make such a big, big impact to myself. So much more than those people that say, oh, you look so pretty and bombshell hot. Now throughout my 20s, even though I've used a dating app for just about two days, and that's pretty much it, and it didn't really lead to anything at all, but validations like, you look so beautiful, you are so smart, you are so this, so that from a guy, is nowhere near as fulfilling as comments from people that truly benefited from my work. People who are wanting to change their life, and they're coming to your work and implementing what you say, then actually leveling up their life. That is a whole new level of fulfillment that I cannot explain. And how Having gratitude for these people, for taking time to watch your content, for choosing to click on your video besides all the pool of videos they could have watched, but they chose you. You must feel genuine gratitude towards these people. Without those people that commented in the early phases of your YouTube channel, your videos may have never been discovered by the algorithm and take off. So I know how tempting it is to be like, how do I get to 100 grand subscribers? This is not good enough. I don't like what I'm seeing. It's just only one comment per video. I don't like this. I have to be honest that there are still times up to this day where I slip back into that mode, but that kind of energy is so repelling and entitled. Now this ties back to the unfair advantage. For my whole life, I've never had a lot of friends. And so I never had a lot of Facebook likes or Instagram likes. I was never popular. And because of this, it makes me appreciate all the comments and like even more than ever before. So honestly, my YouTube journey has been such a happy, happy one. The people in this community are truly acknowledging what you say in your videos. They truly acknowledge the inner work that you've done. And they provide such constructive feedback that feels more energy for me to want to be a better person. So the more you can assign very positive meanings to every single feedback you receive, to every single interaction you have with your audience, the better you'll feel about yourself. And the better you feel about yourself, the better content you will create. And also I try to cultivate gratitude for my life outside of YouTube. I have a lot of gratitude for my youthful looks because I'm approaching my 30s, but I'm refusing to have a skeptical mindset, refusing to acknowledge, oh, adult life sucks and it's better to be a teenager. No, it doesn't. Life just keeps getting better and better because we're growing all the time. And also the other thing I really have gratitude for is my parents because without my parents' hard efforts, I probably wouldn't have this life in Australia. And this is something that I don't verbally express to them, but I've been feeling it more and more and more. My parents owned a Thai restaurant for more than 13 years. And since I was about six years old, our family moved to Australia and my dad grew up in a rich family. My dad had a nanny. My dad was spoiled. He didn't know how to chop vegetables. 
but because we fell short financially, my dad actually had to rise above his circumstances and learn how to chop vegetables, learn how to clean hotel rooms, learn how to run a restaurant, learn how to make stir fry dishes and make them under pressure. And he actually enjoys it because it gives him purpose and it makes him fit. And I have so much gratitude that I have a dad that sets a really, really good example for me. I remember going to James Clear event for Atomic Habits and I talk about all these habit systems and all these things that James Clear talks about in the presentation. And my dad was just like, if you want to wake up early, you just get up, wear your shoe, walk out the door and go for a walk at 7 a.m. What is so hard about that? But it doesn't work like that for majority of the people. And I was so lucky to have that firsthand experience of somebody who doesn't need any motivational tool to keep going. Discipline to stay congruent to your future self is literally the 99% determining factor to your success. So every time I'm not getting views or I feel bad about myself on those days, I repeat this phrase to myself, the AdSense revenue alone from this YouTube channel can buy me every single experience I've ever wanted as a child. Whether it's more makeup, whether it's traveling, whether it's giving my parents money, making them feel proud. I think about that future and suddenly my energy would spike up and I'd be able to plan out more content or regulate my emotions in a way where the next day I just feel inspired to work again. And that is the power of gratitude. So cheese again, these are the learning lessons I've had so far on this YouTube growth. So before I end this video, the mistake I want you to truly avoid is only focusing on the short term gains versus the longevity of your channel. Instead of thinking, how can I make one video go viral? Think about your channel as a whole and see it as a template. And what does that take? The characteristics of somebody that normalizes making content that caliber. Even if at the end of 2024, I may have not hit the numbers that I truly wanted to hit, but at least I know that I've refined my process. I refined my YouTube template. I understand my own direction. And whether the views happen now this year or next year, this month or next month, doesn't matter. I've already created the system and that's a truly important factor. So again, guys, thank you so much for all of your support and shout out again to Precious Pink or Rachel, who's been supporting my long form video from the start and shout out to every single one of you who left such beautiful comments on my videos and making me feel so happy to keep creating content for you guys. Again, if you guys like this channel, feel free to subscribe and leave a comment and let us know what you want to see. I will try my best to tailor my content towards your request and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.